Hello everyone. Welcome back. I am Lady Calamere. And if you're new to this channel, well then, hail and welcome. Today I am going to be discussing the 63rd video, which will be on the goddess Morrigan. Morrigan. Woo. <laughs> I've known her for so many years and I love her. Come on, little boo. Lady Boss. Oh, she's mad because this guy is here. They don't want to share. Morrigan. Wow. There is some misconceptions about her. And back when I started in 1983, we didn't have the internet. And of course, there were sources saying, you know, talk about the Morgan, but of course, you don't want to invoke her because she'll bring travesty and chaos to your life. Now, more and more people are calling upon her, and she's become extremely popular once again in the modern times. But there's been some misinformation about her and I understand about your own personal gnosis your unverified personal gnosis but that doesn't make it fact lady boss especially when we have things that were written down of course by Christian monks and a Christian uh, slant was put on to these stories Anyways, here are some statues. Of course, I had to build this altar around him. Oh, shoot. So, anyways, Samhain is around the corner. It is October 13th today. Well, I'm doing this all pub published by October 14th. Oh, goody. Fucking goody. Busted something. Uh, oh, goody, 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 goody gumdrops. Shoot. Anyways, oh my God. So Samhain spelled Sam Hain, but Samhain. You know, starts on October 31st. However, the true Samhain, where, well, I will say, the thin, when the realms are the thinnest, is actually in Scorpio, 15th degree, which I think this year would be on the 4th. Sometimes it has fallen on the 6th or the 7th of November. But anyways, Samhain, summer's end. In the Celtic tradition, to Celtic lands, you had two seasons, summer and winter. You didn't have the fall, and the spring. You had summer and winter. Why am I bringing up Samhain? It's a very sacred day and night to the Morrigan. The Mori, sometimes pronounced Mori, Mori, Morrigan. However, this is the day that is said that the meeting between Dagda, husband, and the Morrigan, his wife, and yes, in the the sources, she is his shapeshifter wife. Meet at the river, and they straddle the river, one leg on either side, and they have sex. And of course, he meets her every year about this time. And this is the time when he was wanted to defeat the Fomorians and she gives him battle advice in which, of course, the Tua de Danon defeat the Fomorians. It's also since Samhain, this is a time when she leads, leads a whole band of spirits across the land of Ireland.
So she has been, by some people, saying to be a goddess of rebirth and romantic sexual love. And this comes from a person who admit it was just their own taking of it. And of course, now it's become canon, unofficial canon, but it's not. She's not a soft goddess. And I've seen some images of her that she's, she's holding a sword, but she looks so soft and so delicate and dainty where... She she wouldn't even look like she'd be able to fight. And I know this is delicate, but this is more gothic, which I like. That was actually a gift of my other half. Oh, this doesn't want to stand. Oh. We have Imager with her, the spear. And also, uh, in the book by Hennessy... The Irish war goddesses about 1870 links her to Neven, which means venomous. And she's also another uh, dark war goddess, bloodthirsty goddess. However, the Morrigan as three in one has been described as Nor Morrigan is Beeb, which means crow. You got Maka, Maka, and you have Anu. Those are the ones that are accepted. So, she's also was saying to be like a triple goddess. And people immediately think, Maiden Mother Crone, Maiden Mother Crone. That's more of a modern thing. When we talk about triple goddess, sometimes we see the three sisters. The three maidens or a three crone. However, she really takes aspects of different goddesses. If you look at the source, she's maiden. She's warrior. She's mother. Like a mother-ish, dark mother, and crone, and ooh, lady bosses, man, and sovereign queen. I must dismiss some things. Yes, there is a son that she had given birth to. His name was Mecca. Me no, Mek. Mek. And he had to die. Not by her hand. But he had to die because he had three hearts and each heart had a snake and it would be the end of Ireland so the arch the, the, the arch another god kills him the arch it so I was thinking now I'm going to get into her other things. Say hello, Shadow. Lady Boss, come on. She's, man, she's hurt. Anyways, she's hurt because she's hurt. So anyways, let's look at the main Mori gun with the father, with the hyphens above the name. Her name was originally the Great Queen. Now, later on with the interpretations with the Christians and the monks, they either didn't know to put the father there or they didn't care. And without the father, Fada, the vowels, her name means Phantom Queen. So with the vowels, it's more Regan, the Great Queen. She's, so, yes, she is a, a goddess of phantoms. She is a goddess of death and the spirits. However, she is the great queen. She is the great queen of the land. Now, when we say sovereignty, she doesn't always grant sovereignty. She grants victory, yes. But sovereignty is a different thing when we talk about sovereignty then and now. Sovereignty means to be lord or king of the land or queen of the land. And she couldn't always grant that. Not even to Ku Kulin, whom I'll, if I have time, I'll get into that. Those two like oil and water. The Morrigan. Let's just jump into it. Her main color has always been red. And she's seen with uh, 
different colors hair, usually with the red hair and red eyebrows and wearing red. Sometimes she's seen with black hair or gray hair. I guess that she comes as chrome. That being said, her main color is red. Her secondary color is black. And if you want to attribute another color to her, you can cut the color of the old lit hair, the gray and gray skies, and that she is the goddess of the first day of winter. Some attribute gray, but it's really red and black. Her numbers, her main numbers are three and nine. Three and nine. Also, the wood associated with her is hazel. In fact, she is saying to hold a hazel staff. And hazel happens to be the ninth letter of the Olam alphabet. She's a goddess of many guises. She comes as different things. She, she's a shapeshifter. She'll come whatever shape she wants. But usually she shows herself as a woman of different ages. She also comes as an eel, a wolf, crow, a raven, and raven. She comes as a cow, like with red, white cow with red ears. So those are one of the preferred things that she comes as. But again, she is a shapeshifter. The spirits of the she that she's most associated with is the Banshee. The Banshee, the one. It is because uh, it's the one that screams when the family member is going to die. Sometimes the banshee is sometimes uh, inher it comes through family lines. No! <laughs> he's trying to break. He's like scenting things and almost knocked her over. She's a goddess of war and battle. She's a goddess of whoever she... She's a goddess of bloodlust. She is a sexual goddess, but she's not like a love goddess, in which some people have made her out to be. And she's there's she's she could come very beautiful, but she's not soft. Lady Bost. She's not soft at all. Now with the Samhain. We see Dagda coming together with the Morrigan, meaning life and death coming together. And yes, Dagda can deal death. He has a he has his battle club, which one end, one side could kill nine men in one swing, and the other end can bring back healing and life. But in this instance when we see the Dagda coming together with the Morgan we see the life and death creation and destruction Lady Bost she's mad she doesn't want to even come up come on do you want to come here no you're too angry well, the Morrigan is also a goddess of fate. In fact, she is a prophetess, a psychic. And she can help you do that too. She's a witch goddess. She's a witch queen. She is the land itself in a way of the land of being vengeful. The blood the land that drinks the blood of the slain. She could be the land in its aggressive form of war and to fight for what you have. The Morrigan is frightening. In fact, uh, 
one of her the name in Moore, I believe it was in Middle Irish. The Moor, the word Moor represents monsters and nightmare. Where she was identified with the Greek Lamia. That she was identified as the nightmare, the monster, gruesome. But also she's associated with rivers and streams. Interesting enough, her the first name of Moor in Welsh means to deal with ocean. So there is some uh, things about her possibly being a seafaring goddess, but however, a seafaring goddess, however, she's more dealing with the lakes and the, the, the rivers. She also deals with caves and deals with entrances to the other side, be it with the land of the dead or the land of the she or to portals. In fact, her home, one of her caves is called Wei Nagat, which means the cave of the cat. And this is a cave she goes through frequent a lot where she goes into the underworld. Wei Nagat. Some of our gods and goddesses have been Christianized and made into saints, like Breed. Breed, breed, comes bride, and Bridget. Morgan, not so. She's a she-devil. However, she was last seen howling and shrieking and screaming at the Battle of Clontar in 1017. Well, 1017 AD, or CE, 1017 CE, well into the Christianized Ireland. There's also a statue. She, she returns again on top of a statue, which seen a raven perched upon Kukulun, and it's, he's, spelled, he's spelled differently, but it's Kukulun. Kukulun, the hound of Cullen. Kukulun's dying body on top of his shoulder. And it's a part of a moving statue in Dublin. And this celebrates and commemorates the fallen heroes of in Ireland in 1916. Which this rebellion spoke, uh, started the war for... Ireland's independence, which resulted in, was it 1921, I want to say, 1921, of the first sovereign Celtic nation in hundreds and hundreds of years. So yeah, we see her there. We also see her appearing in video games like Smite, but uh, I really don't play video games anymore. I haven't done for years. Lady Boss, boobity boo. She's mad. Come on. We want to see you. Oh, jeez. Break my own fucking statues. Anyways, the Morrigan. Morrigan has been associated with different goddesses and a lot of people like to uh, conflate different goddesses and say, no, goddesses are wine goddesses, blah, 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 blah. I don't do that. So as she is the sovereign goddess, the Morrigan will teach you about your own sovereignty, though. Know? Now we go into the modern stuff. What is sovereignty to you? Is sovereignty meaning to own your own place? Is sovereignty meaning to be independent from your family? Is sovereignty you mean to you means to be divorced or to be single and call your own shots? Does sovereignty means that you don't want to work for anyone? You want to own your own business? Is this what sovereignty is to you? Is sovereignty means to rise in, in the company to become uh, 
possibly a CEO of the company. It, so you have to think what sovereignty is to you. Morgan herself, a lot of people like to say, oh, she's a cuddly and she's a motherly figure. She's not motherly at all. I mean, I can't tell you how you're going to perceive it or maybe the way you think you're perceiving is the way you want to see it. However, anyone will tell you the Morgan is a friggin' hard pill to swallow at times. And she's like that horse pill you have to take to get better. And it kind of makes you sick to the stomach and it's hard to get down but will make you better. That is how the Morgan acts and responds. She will help you. And she's helped me in the past and sometimes it's gone smooth. But when I resisted, when I wanted the help or when I wasn't sure but I called for the help. Oh man. Did she uh, cause upheavals? But it was for my own good. But did she ever cause upheavals? But even though I called her bitch and I was like, oh, damn, you're a bitch. She still helped me. And she knows how I am. So she knows who I am and how I am. She knows that myself, I am also tread the dark path, as well as the light. The Morgan, when she comes to me, she comes to me standing in a black background, but she has red hair and she has spears, like two spears, and she has a sword in her hand. She has long red hair, red eyebrows, piercing green eyes, very beautiful but hard looking stern looking and muscular sexy but muscular and the background is actually black with crows and you see them coming i see them coming to me and and that's one of the main re how main things she comes to me as So, she's a goddess of sorcery, prophecy, warfare. Though she usually doesn't jump into the warfare, she it. I mean, she is a warrior. She is a very powerful warrior. However, she's the one that works her magic in warfare, and she prophesies about warfare, and she interferes with warfare. She's the type of goddess that's not going to mind her business. What she gets her hands in is her business. And warfare is also her business. So, too bad for you. <laughs> She's... Also, in, in one of the warfare stories, you'll see that she fixes pillars in the ground to prevent anyone fleeing the battlefield. Either they don't dare do it or they can't eat away. They are, the, the pillars are like, pass not. Thou shalt not pass not. Thou shalt not pass. She's the one that gets, says to get angry when people like, run and defeat and coward and cowardice in the battlefield that she gets revenge on them and she would strike them down she's also foretells a warrior's death when they ride on a horseback and women used to fight too until that was outlawed by a bishop because his mother i forgot which bishop it was but his mother saw the dead woman warriors and she was very upset and the bishop had declared that no more will women fight. Which is supposed to have babies and, and clean, cook and clean, right? <laughs> no, but women were very fierce warriors. Now, back to the story is that they would uh, ride their horses or walk along and they see a woman, an old woman, washing clothes. When they come up to her, sometimes they may even ask, whose clothes are you washing? The old woman would reply, yours. And the clothes are covered in blood. And when they blink, she's no longer there. How do we know the stories? Because some people relate. Like, you know, I saw an old lady saying she was washing my bloodstained clothes. And another boy would be like, you're going to die today. And yep, sure enough, 
the person died. Person died, all right. So, she is now seen, she later on becomes a goddess of the fairies and the she, but she's a goddess of the land and a goddess of the dead and a goddess of the spirits and she can help you talk to the spirits of the dead. She's a death because she deals with death. She is the death dealer. She is death. She is the lady death in that way. She is also the goddess of the unknown, which would be the occult, but she is the goddess of the unknown. She is the goddess who will not be defeated. She is the goddess that will get her way in any way she can, even through trickery. We're not saying that she's like a Loki figure or, or Krishna in that way, but she does use her trickery to get exactly what she wants. So, other things about her is that she is not the most easiest to approach for those who were easily scared or very timid may not feel comfortable calling upon her, especially when she, when leaving Christian, that you feel called to her. She's not lenient in that way. And she does be, she is very, she is capricious and she does get, she is vengeful, remember that. I sound like I'm trying to scare you from her. That's my point is to approach her if you are timid, like I said, approach her approach her with some caution. Remember exactly what she is. She's a bloodthirsty goddess. She's not she's not like where in some aspects of Inanna of being loving and then the other like warrior during the day, a lover at night. This is the goddess of battles, war, and fights. This is the goddess that will bite, scratch, claw, cut, dice. She'll do everything. She'll bake. She'll roast you. She'll boil you. She'll fry you. She'll fillet you. She'll pound you. <laughs> I'm being funny. I, I don't feel right without a cat driving me nuts. Lady boss. Oh, she's mad. And before I had a cat eating here, and I was going to go on with, you know, a cat eating here. <laughs> with a big bowl of food, as you can see over here. <laughs> Morgan is a fiery goddess. She's ferocious, but she's also a goddess of divinations, which you can use her for like pendulums and tarot and scrying. You can use, you can connect her in that way. She can help open up your psychic senses, open up your intuition, empower you, give you empowerment to take your power back to whether metaphorically or in reality to take your power back she is a goddess of strength
who called uh, sorry the morrigan we say the morrigan because when we talk it's just like sort of like english i worship great goddess i love great goddess so i would say i love the great goddess i worship the great goddess we say the morrigan when we call her we call her morrigan she's also called morigu and and it depends on who you talk to morigu is plural morigu is singular so The Morrigan is also said to order to to uh, own cows in the fairyland where they're connected together by a, by like a brass or silver chain. So other things about her is that she's a lim like I said she's a liminal goddess. She deals with she deals with otherworldly things. She can also deal with the dream world because that's the dream world is connect close to the death world. When you say when you dream, she owns a sword, she owns two spears, she. As you can see, she also has a cauldron. She deals with that, too. She deals with anything dealing with sorcery, magic, whether it be uh, cauldrons or magical implements or tools. She represents the old ways. And you can see a lot of symbolism in this statue. As you can see, all this wonderful symbolism, which is hers. Now, another thing that they say that's been associated in modern times is rebirth. Ah, your rebirth, she's the goddess of death and rebirth. I, I, I have not been any been able to see in any of the source that she deals with rebirth. Not anywhere, and I think that's more that's more of a modern thing of death and rebirth. Yeah, she clears the way for things to be reborn, but I, as far as bringing birth to children, I mean, she's a, she's a god, she's a powerful goddess, and if you ask her, she'll probably help you with that. That's in her realm, she can help you with that. I mean, she is a goddess, and she is a powerful witch, so, hey. But herself, she's not really dealing with that. So that's more of a modern thing of unverified personal gnosis of saying, yes, the Morrigan is the goddess of rebirth. And I'm not trying to put anyone down. I'm just saying the source. And yes, our gods do evolve. Yes, our deities do keep up to date. But yeah, I, I do see it more and more where she's associated with rebirth. But that was coming from, from my, I can't remember, from an article on the internet. So, and it just snowballed from there. So, anyways, archaeological evidence suggests that the Morrigan's worship, and she stands back to 3000 BCE, or past that, and, and she's, she is, and she, recur she's in a lot of the source materials, where she appears again and again, not just like in splattering, she I means she is there. And some people like to say, oh, she was never described as a goddess in the source materials or she was just a supernatural female supernatural being than an actual goddess really because she's also described as dia and bandi and dia and bandi bandi 
in Gaelic means goddess, Dia and Bandi. So no, sorry, she is was not just described as a supernatural being, not a goddess. She was described, she was called the goddess. She was also described as the wife of the Dagda. Not just consort or lover, the wife of the Dagda. So yes, yeah, she is a goddess. Some people say she comes as a Koilach. I would like to eventually do something on the Koilach, which will probably be my next presentation that I'm planning. Who knows? I change. So, so things that you could put on her altar, red and black, especially red, anything to do with witchcraft and now Wicca. So she's been associated into that. Ooh, any sim pictures of graveyards, graveyard dirt, grave rocks from the graveyard, skulls, bullets, knives, swords, spears, lances, arrowheads would be good. If you can, if it is legal in your state or in your area, you can have a raven or crow. I know in some states it's illegal to have one. And I doubt know I doubt the SWAT teams are gonna be busting down your door if you have one. But failing to get one, get an image of ravens and crows or black feathers. It could be a chicken feather dried black, and you can use that in your rituals. Any black feather will do. A black fan feather. A feather, feather, what is it? Feather, a feathered fan, black. Anything gothic. Bones. Anything to do with pictures of her animals that she likes to come as, as I say, wolf, eel, cor any corvid, like the crow, and raven. The white cow with the red ears, or cow, cattle, is good pentagrams pentacles or pent pentacles pentagrams image of battles as you can see she wears a torque here now in gaelic the torque was equivalent to the crown to the modern day crown the torque represents nobility rulership so you could put a crown or a torque on her altar anything images of caves would be good images of witches That's just some things that you can do. I find that the incense that she likes in the oil is definitely dragon's blood and dragon's blood resin, which I did a presentation on dragon's blood. Feel free to go to my channel, Lady Calamere, and look it up. So, we see this goddess will help you find your voice to stand up for what you believe to stand to, to actually voice yourself and be heard she is the type of goddess that will help you fight help you to get your will, will help you will help you. She's not going to carry you for the most part. She's not. She'll help you until you learn how to fight for yourself. So I know people are going to like, what about Cool Cullen? You know what? You, everyone talks about Cool Cullen. Let's hear about Cool Cullen. We see her coming. Uh, there's, one pl there's one story. I'll get into one of the stories. There's many. 
that Kukulin, Kukulin is a protector of uh, the land of his land of Ulster. And he sees a woman on a chariot. But not just any old chariot. She has red hair, red eyebrows. She wears them like over her clothing, her her garments, a red mantle. With her is a very strong man dressed in red. The horse, oh, it's another worldly horse. It's a one-legged horse. One leg, one ear, one eye, and the pole is going right through the horse, through its head. And she has a cow with her, a very, uh, just a very important cow too, by the way. And she has a staff made of hazel. Cool Cullen thinks that she stole this cow. I mean, obvious. Look at the sleigh. She has a one ho one legged horse. So he comes up to her and approaches her. And he demands, Where did you get that cow? He demands to know her name first. And it, it, he speaks to the man. The man is silent. The woman speaks for the man. And he goes, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to the man. You don't speak for the man. Bzz. Mistake one. Uh, so, Ku Cullen demands his name. So, she speaks for a man and gives up some Looney Tune name. Like this really nonsensical name and then he demands her name in which the man finally speaks and gives a nonsensical name he gets angry he wants to know where did you get the cow from i won it as i'm a satirist and i made a poem and he demands the poem he he, he she she doesn't speak it to she really jumps on her on her legs into the carriage and puts a sword to her head and she says, I want to hear the poem. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll tell you a poem. And she tells him, I will tell you about your fate and your death. <laughs> he gets angry. He's pissed off now. He jumps off the carriage. He grabs his spear. And then the whole scene disappears. That whole carriage. And there was a crow. And he goes, if only I've known it was you. It did, we would not have parted this way. And it wasn't like a sorry, sorry, uh, um, sorry kind of thing. He want he would have killed. He would like to her killed her basically. And basically, she said, "What thou hast done, shall be evil to thee from it." And Kuku, and you have no power over me. And she goes, "Oh yes, I do. I do have power indeed." And it is the guarding of thy death that I am. See, it's not that she sort of causes it. I am. I guard your death. Remember that. And she does. She does keep that promise. Remember the statue I told you with the raven? And he goes. She, well, she continues, I brought this cow out of the fairy mound. Oh, Kurahan. That it might breed by the black bull of Kuli, Kuling. That will be the bull that's going to start the ton, the ton bull Kuli. The, the cattle way, the Kuli, by, you know, Goddess Maeve. And it's going to give birth to the brown cow. How now, brown cow? It is, that's what my mother used to say to me. Anyways, it is up. So when she says up to that time, thou art in life, so long as the calf you will live. In which the cow's body is a yearling, and it is that shall lead to the cattle raid. And then he says, I shall be made more glorious for that raid. Which, of course, he promises. Interesting enough. Sometimes she does... Does she really try to offer help to to Kuku 
when there was time when she came up to him as this beautiful temptress and she says that I'm in love with you. I heard about your exploits. And he goes, well, we're starving here and I really can't throw myself at a woman. And she says, but I can help you. And he goes, I didn't come here for no woman's backside. He's there by spurning her. So it's kind of like she gets back at him. So, and I mean, there was even a, a, a spar of words of where she says, I am going, they, they have a spar in which actually happens the way it happens and he that she, that when he has a bot a battle with Locke she turns so I'm gonna sum this up she turns herself into an eel and wraps herself three times around his body thereby tripping him and in which she breaks her ribs and then she turns herself into a wolf where she attacks him and then he knocks out her eye and then she turns herself finally into a cow with white ears, a hornless cow with white ears and chases like a whole herd and in which he takes a slingshot and breaks her leg. Basically they promised each other what was going to happen and he said that when I, when I hurt you, when I harm you, when they were getting to words in which he does, you will not heal from it. True enough, she did not heal. So after his defeating of Locke, he's thirsty and he sees this old lady, harmless lady with a cow and she's milking it. And it has, cow has three teats. And he goes, I'm thirsty lady, would you offer me a drink? And she says, sure, if you would heal, bless me for each drink I give you. So she gives the first tea, she gives him milk. He was very happy. He blesses her, heals her eye and her head. She's healed. The second drink from the second tea, he heals her ribs. And the third tea, he heals her broken leg. And then she shows herself. Um, he wasn't happy. She said, yes, you may have harmed me. You promised I would not heal. But like I said, I will have you heal. I, I have you heal me and I'm made whole. So there we go again, the sparring between them. And of course, at the final battle, where he was fighting this guy, Lug, and which three threw three spears, which he drew at him, which was prophesied that each spear would kill a king. And which, of course, you know, there are some stories right before this battle. She tried, in, in some sources, she tries to stop him. She tries to warn him. There's one part, it's like, the, actually, depending on the source, that she actually breaks his uh, chariot. One part is that his horse, his horses, which will come from the fairy realm, one is called the Grey of Maka, was actually bleeding tears out of its eye crying tears of blood and there's sometimes that she she was mocking him telling him not to go and he was basically basically gave her the finger and in which his final battle in which one spear was thrown kills the king of charioteers another spear was thrown kills the king of horses and the third spear was to kill him it hits, he's the king of warriors. Hit him in the gut and spilled out his guts. And in which he ties himself to a stone because he wants to die a hero's death. If he's dying sitting up or laying down, he's not going to be seen as a hero. So he stands up. And in which then a raven comes by, and this is like kind of dark humor that comes into the stories. His guts spill out, and the raven trips and falls, and he kind of laughs at her. And she reminds him that I will guard your death. And she jumps on his shoulder as he dies. Now, when Locke 
Lug comes over, not Lok, but Lug, not Lu, the god L-U-G-H. This is someone else. He comes over to his dead body to behead him, and as he lifts up his, one of his hands get cut off. But he does behead his behead uh, Kukulin. However, we see the statue with the raven on his shoulder and his guts hanging out. How nice. So, things about her is that she can be she can go into quick into anger about things so sometimes she could come into your life when you need to stand up for yourself but sometimes you need to be able to quell that anger so that you don't hurt yourself and other people I know she's a goddess that can flare up tempers. Anyway, some books on her. One of them is, I, I have it as an e-book. Let me go get it. It is The Feast of the Morrigan. That's a good one. Look it up, The Feast of the Morrigan. And I, I'm trying to remember the author. And he's a very... Christopher Penzac. Christopher Penzac. There's also... I have this. The Guises of the Morrigan. By David Rankine and Sarita de Este. There's also, this is really good, it's a big one. Celtic Lore and Spellcraft of the Dark Goddess by Invoking the Morrigan by Stephanie Woodfield. Really good god, good book. Let me put it over here. Get them out of the way. So the dark half of the year is a good time for the Morrigan. She's also, you could call her during the day, but she she's definitely a night goddess. She likes the night too. She is said to pour rains of blood, rain and blood from the lacerated sky, bleeding horror. It's Slayer song called Rain and Blood. That's an awesome album. But that's what she does, raining blood. She rains blood upon the other side. And and she's the kind of goddess that will jump from one side to another. One side of one about um one nation against another. And then she'll go from that nation to that nation. She'll do as she pleases. By the way, the Dagda's name means the good god. And that doesn't mean sweet and kind. We mean that he's uh, efficient in a lot of things. And he's a professional in a lot of things. So... People that or that she chooses that she likes are heroes, warriors, those who go in front lines, like SWAT team would definitely be hers in the modern time. Yeah, she would like the SWAT team. Mercenaries, professional fighters. Martial arts, martial artists, teachers, and students. 
witches and sorcerers and magicians and occultists. Those who do divination and fortune telling are definitely hers. Rural, those who, well, sometimes you had rulers, but also that of, can I say I, those who stand in the front lines battalions national guard coast guard So, there's also books about her on pagan portals. I like their books. One is called The Raven Goddess, and another one by, uh, the, it's called The Morrigan. I'm trying to remember the author, but it's uh, on pagan portals. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, who is the author? Why won't you tell me? Oh, thank you for disappearing. Morgan Dalmer. Morgan Dalmer. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you're not, please subscribe. And I do not have a Patreon account. So if you like this video, uh, how about donating to veterans, homeless veterans? Let's, if you like this video, Please think about giving some things to veterans and or if you see a veteran, help them out. You know, buy them a cup of coffee, buy them a sandwich, give them a dollar <laughs> and, or at least go up to them and thank them for their service. They, they like that, you know, because they need to feel appreciated, too. You can say thank you for your service. Thank you for protecting my freedom. Sometimes, you know, a little kindness goes a long way. And it doesn't cost you a dime to be kind. But anyways, thank you for watching. And Little Boo is angry at me. She's so mad. Let's go see Little Boo. Little Boo. Why are you sulking? She's mad at me. It's not my fault. You didn't want to come. Oh, she doesn't want to be bothered. I don't want to talk to you. Somehow I'm the bad guy. There is Sir Mew Mew. I don't know where Miss Kitty is. Oh, and please do prayers for Miss Kitty. She's on antibiotics. Uh, little someone's got a UTI. And she's an old lady, though. She's like eight years old. But anyways, thank you for watching. And please send out prayers and spells for Miss Kitty. You know, she's the black one with the little white spot in her neck. She's eight years old. And Shadow is just an old fart, so he's got old farts disease. He's 15 <laughs> years and three months old, so send out some prayers to them. And thank you for watching. Blessed be.